Our second day of solving equations, we're going to work on solving equations using the distributive property. Before we get to actually solving equations with the distributive property, though, let's go over a little bit of vocabulary uh, as a review just to make sure we understand what each thing is. So if you remember last time, we talked about a term. This entire thing constitutes a term. Okay, well, if we're looking at a term, we want to know each part of the term. The number in the very front is called the coefficient. Okay, it's the big number in the front. It's how many times it's multiplied. The number that has uh, the exponent next to it, this is called the base or the variable. And it, this is the letter, okay? Whatever letter it is, generally speaking, that's gonna be your base or variable. And then you have the exponent. or power. Those are the numbers that are floating along the side of the term. So if I have 2x cubed, we have a coefficient of 2, a base or variable of x, and a power or exponent of 3. Those make up terms. So what we're trying to do here is we're going to need to combine like terms. If you remember from last time, we learned that combining like terms is just adding always the big numbers or the coefficient for the like ter terms. So whatever is the big number or the coefficient for these like terms, you're going to add them together. You may be adding negative numbers together, but you're always combining them by using addition. If we're looking for the solution of, a, of an equation, which we will be at the end of this lesson, we're looking for the number that makes the equation true. So we're looking to make true mathematical statements here. Basically, we're going to end up with a number that if I were to plug it back in, that number would make all of the equation make sense. It's what we're solving for. We're going to look for x equals some number. That's how we know we've gotten to our solution. Inverse operations are going to be operations that undo each other. We talked about that last time. They're inverses. The opposite of addition is subtraction. The opposite of multiplication is division. Last but not least, we're going to be talking about the distributive property today. The distributive property can be defined as follows. Let's say we're taking a number a and we're going to multiply it by some quantity b plus c. Okay, pretend those are all numbers or letters. Well, to do that, we're going to use fireworks. Pew, pew. And we're going to multiply that a by both pieces or all pieces of the parentheses. a times b and a times c. If it's like if this was a waiter coming to visit some sort of table at, at a restaurant, you know, back when we could go to restaurants, um, this waiter has to bring the, the waters to every single person at the table. If he only brought the water to person B, then person C would be like, man, where's my water? So then person A also has to come bring the water to person C. That is distribution. This number is multiplied to all terms. in the parentheses. So that number in the front is pew pew multiplied to all terms or all numbers inside those parentheses. That's all the vocabulary we're going to use today. Let's get to some practice problems. It says we use the distributive property to solve multi-step equations, so no longer we're going to have nice little simple equations, we're going to have more complicated ones. But just like we saw a second ago, if we have uh, three combo meals where there's two tacos and a soda with each one, then that means in total, we're gonna to end up with six tacos and three drinks. Because three times two tacos is six tacos, and three times one drink is three drinks total. That is the distributive property when it comes to doing your order at Taco Bell. So let's practice simplifying some of these equations. Now, again, when you see a number in front of parentheses, that's what you're going to distribute. So if we do this, we go pew, pew. We're distributing that 4 into the parentheses. This is always multiplication. 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times 5 is 20. 
These two things are not like terms, so I'm going to be stopping right there because I cannot combine them together anymore. Y'all pause the video and you try the second one. Here's what I got as my simplified answer. I can't do anything else because 16 or negative 16y and negative 32x are not like terms, so I can't combine them. Some of you may have written down this, negative 16y plus negative 32x. Technically, that is the same answer. Okay, so technically these are the same. However, this is more simplified than this other one. Do you see how there's double signs right here? That's not technically incorrect. Adding a negative is a thing, but adding a negative is just literally the same thing as subtracting. So I will accept plus negative 32x, but I would rather you write it as just minus 32x. Now, uh, if we look at this next one, it's kind of the next two are kind of tricky. What number is actually sitting in front of this parentheses right here? It's an invisible one. So if I distribute that invisible one inside the parentheses, we're going to end up with negative 5x, and the negative 1 times negative 8 is positive 8, because a negative times a negative is a positive. We're going to do this last one together, but what is the number that we're going to actually be distributing in this problem? If you look, the number that's in front of the parentheses is negative 2, not the 3. We need that 3, but not right now. So we're going to distribute that 2 into the parentheses, the negative 2. So negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Now, I didn't do anything with that 3, so it still belongs in this equation. But do you notice that 3 and negative 8 are like terms? I can always combine my like terms to continue to simplify. So 3 plus a negative 8 is a negative 5. And I have my simplified expression. So here's the big kahuna. We're going to start using inverse operations to solve these equations. I'm going to be solving all of these with the box method that I explained last time. Your last notes have the steps for the box method on it. It started with check if there's distribution. We didn't have that happen last class, but we will today. If you're doing these problems and you're like, Miss Quigley, I really just like the way I learned in eighth grade, which was using inverse operations, drawing a line and balancing equations, you go ahead and do it. You are totally allowed to use inverse operations to solve these equations. But if that has never really worked for you, or you think you like this box method, try the box method with me. For the most part, this is a very easy way to always solve super complicated equations. Okay, first thing we're going to do is always draw a line. Classic move. We're going to check for distribution. I see that there's a negative 3 in front of parentheses, so I have to distribute. That's always step 1. Negative 3 times 2r is negative 6r. And negative 3 times positive 7 is negative 21. Finish writing down my line. From here, I can draw my boxes. Remember, when you're doing the box method, you draw two boxes on either side with an equal sign in the middle that have two rows each. Then we count. How many r values are there? Well, there's only one term with an r here, so we're only going to have one box. But there are two terms that are constants or just good old-fashioned regular numbers. So I'm going to make two top boxes on the number side. Then I play drag and drop. Drag and drop, no inverse operations. Drag and drop, oop, inverse operations. So the inverse of negative 21 is positive 21. Loop, no inverse operations. All I have to do across the top is add. Remember, we are just adding these numbers across the top. Nothing adds with negative 6r, so I just bring it on down. But 21 plus 3 is 24. The very, very last step to finish solving these equations is to divide by the coefficient, or the big number in front of the variable. It will be the number on this side, if you do the box method correctly. So we're going to be left with r equal to 24 divided by negative 6, which is negative 4. If I wanted to check to make sure that this number was actually correct, I would take the negative 4 and I would plug it back into my equation. Negative 3 times 2 times negative 4 plus 7 equal to 3. We are trying to see if this is a correct statement. So we do the math. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 7 
is negative 1. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. 3 equals 3 is a true mathematical statement, which means we got this question correct. I want you guys to pause the video right now and try questions number 6 and 7, either using the box method or inverse operations. All right, y'all, here's my work for number 6 and 7 using the box method. For both problems, I started by distributing any number that was in front of the parentheses and then I started dragging and dropping into my boxes. Remembering that if the number is dragged and dropped across that center line, which is why I want you to draw the arrows to make sure it crosses the center line, I'm gonna change the sign from positive to negative or negative to positive. Combine like terms across the top and then divide by the coefficient of the variable, which is usually the number on the left side, and you end up with your solution. Now number eight we're gonna to do together, because I know a lot of times when the variable is not on the left side, that um, students panic. But fear not, the box method allows you not to panic because I don't have to change anything about what I do. I can still start with distribution. Two times four is eight, two times positive x is positive two x. And I still draw my boxes the same way. I don't have to flip this equation around. I don't have to do any movement. All I have to do is follow the steps, okay? We drag and drop. Now the four has to go across because it belongs on the number side. This eight belongs over here, no change. But when I drag that two across, it crosses the center line, so I change its sign. Then I just complete the steps like normal. Look, I don't even have to panic at the fact that the variable was on the other side. I just keep doing what I know how to do and end up with my final answer. X is equal to negative two. That's my solution. So the box method really allows you not to panic when the equation gets complicated. This is why I like the box method. For the very last part of your notes, we're gonna look at the justifica justification for each step. So they've done a problem for us step by step and we're gonna say or write down what they've done. This is great because now this justification box over here becomes some notes for you to utilize to remember what steps to do each time. Okay, so the first thing they did is they wrote down the equation. Check. The second thing they did to change from the first equation to the second, what was it? Yeah, they distributed the number, the negative 2. See, they had a negative 2 here in the front, and so they said, pew, pew, little fireworks to go negative 2 times x, which is negative 2, and negative 2 times negative 10, which is positive 20. Sweet, so then they set up all of their boxes and they did what? Well, it doesn't really make as much sense when you don't see the line down the center, so let's go ahead and draw, draw a line down the center of these equations just to see what they did. Okay, so they did this, and then they did this, and then they did this, and then they did this. So they did the drag and drop step but we're gonna remember that this means that we might have to use inverse operations. If it crosses the center line, like those numbers that flew across that purple line, you have to change the signs, which they did in this question. Next step, what did they do? They took all of these terms across the top and they did what? They combined like terms. And remember, that means that you're adding. You may be adding negative numbers, like they said, negative seven plus negative 20 plus 15, but they combined all of those things together to get the number negative 12. Always add, even if you're adding negative numbers. Then in the very last step, how did they get down here to x equal negative, or sorry, x equal six? Yeah, they divided by the coefficient, so divide, by the number in front of the variable, which is called the coefficient. This will get you your final solution, and so you would know how to check your work. Like I said earlier, everyone, if you have watched these two videos of me using the box method to solve equations, you may go ahead and use the version that you learned last year. But I highly recommend at least starting out or trying the box method if what you learned last year never worked for you. 
because this method will be foolproof for you to be able to, to address the complicated equations that we're going to get to in class. Uh, see you all in class.